History doesn't feel historic when you're sitting in it. It just feels like another day. But that doesn't mean the moment you're in is not historic. And I'm sitting with a, uh, an iconic leader for our time, and I don't use those words lightly, uh, and a friend. His name is Ed Bastian, and he's the chief executive officer uh, of one, I believe, the best airlines in the world, uh, Delta Airlines. Um, this is the sort of airline when uh, the stock momentarily goes down, you look to everybody you know and go, buy, <laughs> because you know it's going to come back. And um, I'm honored to be here with you. Well, John, it's good to be with you. You're such a, a dear friend, and I've always enjoyed doing these, these sessions of the overtime. Yeah. Well, this is a special time. The last time we saw each other, we actually hugged each other. Yeah. Uh, I had to think about that, but I think the last time we, we talked a lot on the phone and by text, but I think the last time we physically saw each other, I believe, was at an event. Yeah. And we had a, we, we, it was a different moment in time. Yeah, we had a dinner together. Yeah. yeah the world the world has changed. Yeah. yeah. And um, there's so many things to discuss, um, but the one thing I want to say before I say anything else uh, is you remind me of what I call a Woodruff era leader. Um, Robert Woodruff was CEO of Coca-Cola in this city. And he had left his position and was replaced by another CEO. And he was out at a hunting, uh, at a hunting lodge. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had just won the Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, we all romanticize these moments. But in that moment, it wasn't very pretty. Dr. King was on his way back uh, from Norway. And the president didn't want to meet with him <laughs> for fear he'd ask for another civil rights bill. Uh, and the city of Atlanta business community didn't want to honor him. And uh, the mayor, the then mayor, asked the CEO of Coca-Cola to would he bring Woodruff in. They went to go meet him at mm -hmm. the hunting lodge. And Woodruff said, this is ridiculous. Just, this is ridiculous. Get everybody together. And he called the business leaders together and said, knock it off. W what are you guys doing? I don't care whether you like Dr. King or don't like Dr. King. This man has won the most important award in the world. He's a positive disruptor. Of course he's going to irritate you. <laughs> uh, he's won the most, one of the most important awards in the world. We are a global supply, supply chain company. And if you don't want to honor this man, okay, but we're going to move out of this backwards town and go someplace where people have got some sense. Now, you've got a week. Figure it out. And within a week, all the tickets were sold, and mm -hmm. the ballroom was full. That's great. People were standing along the wall. And in the short term, Dr. King never knew anything else. They left. They kept it from him. And that story, if we didn't share stories like that, would never be told because he didn't tell it himself. Right. Uh, but in, in 1960-something, that's pretty bold leadership. Yeah. Before COVID-19 hit, you were hit with other crisis, which for most CEOs would have their knees buckle. You, the, the issue with uh, over, uh, I forget what was it, you know, the, one of the, another nonprofit trade group, it was, uh, I don't want to name names, but it was about, you know, something silly, and most CEOs would back away from that. You stepped right up because you thought it was the right thing to do, and turned, I think, a negative into a positive. And here you are again, in the middle of a 120-year-old uh, global pandemic. Mm -hmm. Steady, calm, centered, and assured. Mm -hmm. Why? What's, 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 what's that true north in you? What's yeah. guiding yeah. your decision making, your thought process? Well, again, thank you, John. It's, it's great to be with you, and I always look forward to these, uh, these sessions. Yeah, I just finished, uh, before, before taping this with you, a uh, session with all of our people, and I do it every week. And thousands of people dial in a virtual town hall, and we talk about the business and, and where is it going. And in our business, the thing, and, and for me personally, what the pandemic has caused is a lot of reflection, a lot of thinking about where we were. Remember, we were just this past year when we last saw each other physically at the highest of highs. Yeah, we just, just announced $2 billion in profit sharing yeah, for your employees. Yeah. And Valentine's Day. Best airline performance in, of any airline in the world ever, yeah. right? And then 30 days later, slam. 
slam. The worst. You know, we're, we're going to be go down in history, hopefully closer to the the Woodruff model, as you suggest, than than what I'm facing and feeling like at the moment. You know, the the best air, the best performance in our history in 2019, and the worst performance in our history the next year. Mm. And the juxtaposition of that, and you can say, yeah, it can rattle you. It can, it can, it can. Uh, cause a lot of sleepless nights. But what it's for me is it's made me think even harder about our purpose, mm. about why we do what we do, about the impact we have, about the limited period of time we sit in these chairs, yeah. and the need to continue to leverage every every opportunity you have to make a difference, yeah. whether it's in your business, in your community, for your people, whatever whatever the challenge is. and. I know we're doing that. I know we're doing that. And you know, listen, traffic and air travel is 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 really, really off. I mean, it's you know, we're only back to maybe 30 percent. But it's coming back. But it's slowly coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but we know we're going to get there. Yeah. And the thing that we've learned through it, and I I, I credit my uh, my boss Frank Blake, the CEO of Home Depot, former CEO of Home Depot, is the chairman of Delta, and he's, right. he's my boss. He said to me at the start of the crisis, he said, you know, crises. Don't build character. A lot of people think you go through these crises, especially in our business. You know, it's crazy. You jump from crisis to crisis. Uh, crises reveal yeah. character, yeah. and they, they they tell people who you are, and what you're made of, yeah. and that's what they remember about how you manage through it. And I think about that statement every single day, every single decision. I want people saying that Delta was the airline that took great care of them. Yep that customers love us and are closer to us than ever before, which they are, and we see it in our results, that our people uh, have this sense of pride about how we're working through this challenge and how we're taking good care of them, and we're doing it in so many, so many different ways. Uh, you know, haven't been able, needed to furlough a single employee, for example. Uh, all the things that we've done that are, are, are have never been done before in our industry and they're going to define where we're going. And yeah, it was wonderful last year. It was great, and we all enjoyed this, the celebration. But this year is going to be a lot more meaningful than last year was. Well, you know, also success is easy, uh, but we're built by failure, mm -hmm. and rainbows only follow storms. Uh, I had an 80-year-old and an 18-year-old tell me the same thing within this last past week. When I fly, I will only fly Delta because they actually care about my life. Uh, I believe you're the only airline, uh, at least I was told, that still has middle seats open. Mm -hmm. um, that says something about your character. It mm -hmm. says something about your priorities and your values. It mm -hmm. says that we have a long view and not just trying to jam as much revenue down somebody's throat as they can in the short term, hit some quarterly numbers. You have a long view of the, of the world and you care about your employees out of the profit sharing and your customers, mm -hmm. a la the health and safety standards. I felt safety. My wife and I went, I sent you a photo, yeah. on a trip. It's really funny, Shatra was like, do you need us to get, you, you haven't been on a plane in a while, you, we need, you need us to try to get you one of these Delta business class seats, transfer it to your office, so <laughs> you can sit there and don't go into trauma. Uh, I know you're so comfortable, and uh, she's pretty right. So we, we went on a trip, and, I, and, and we felt more comfortable from the curb at Delta through disembarking than we felt on, on any, in any part of the trip before or after mm -hmm. our arrival. Yeah. It was such a seamless experience, painless. Uh, it was uh, well thought out uh, and curated. And mm -hmm. somebody put a lot of energy into yeah. that. And that confidence, I mm -hmm. think, starts at the top. Mm -hmm. But this can't be easy. Yeah, no, no, it's not. We. Uh you know, in the, in the early days, I, I, I centered my our thinking and our team strategy around the word protect. Mm. You know, protecting our people, protecting our customers. Yep. Now that's the, the, the customers and people, that's, that's who we're protecting. Protecting our cash. Yep. We had to raise a lot of money because we, we knew it was going to be a long storm. Yep. And then just as importantly, protecting our future. Mm. You know, we weren't going to make any decisions that were going to derail us from the greatness of this company and where we're not just going to get back to where we're going to go beyond into the future and we've been leveraging those opportunities to do that. The protecting people and customers is all about instilling confidence back in, in travel. We want our 
customers, by the way, and our employees, because our employees are just as nervous about the, the virus yeah. and as, as our customers uh, would be, to have the same confidence in their experience on Delta relative to their health yes. as their flight safety. Yes. You get on board a Delta flight, most people do not worry about their flight safety. I agree with that, yeah. They, yeah. they, and, 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 yeah. and you know, the one thing that the pandemic has caused us all to do is take a lot of stuff that we took for granted, you know, kind of re-examine, you know, re-explore. Yeah. And we want our customers, and our customers do, and they tell us they do, they feel just as safe with their, with their health mm -hmm. and their public health being on board our planes or in our airports, mm -hmm. in, our, in our locations, as their flight safety. And so it's in the DNA of our company's safety mm -hmm. and protecting. And, and the better job we do that, even at the, 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 the risk of uh, losing money, and listen, we, 40 percent of the seats we fly today, we deliberately don't sell. Yep. Because we want everybody to have the seat that's next to them open. Open, yep. And, and that, that's what it takes to, 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 to put purpose back in in people over profits. Well, there's purpose between the profits. There's purpose in the seats yeah. with, between the profits uh, uh, carrying, uh, carrying the, the balance sheet in the short term. But, you know, you talk about it, you hope that this will end up being a Woodruff-like story. Well, in the short term, Coca-Cola got a hit, took a hit for that, took the, that, that position they took. But African Americans carry Coca-Cola for two decades mm -hmm. after that yeah. here in the States, and they are still one of the biggest growth markets for Coca-Cola in Africa, Absolutely. blacks, who are still uh, 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 great fans of the brand <clears throat> because it became about not just what you do for me about the product, but how do you make me feel, right? right? And, uh, and I think that you're making a very smart long-term bet. Mm -hmm that you're not just an airline, you're a brand. Yep. And it's about culture. Yep. It's about your values and what you stand for. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the move you made around profit sharing, um, have you seen, I used to say to people last year before all this happened, if you got on a Delta flight and you had flight attendants and ramp workers wherever smiling at you, saying hello to you, well, they're shareholders. They're, yeah, they're, exactly. They're, yeah, they're, 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 big, cars, they're, they're so a big they, stakeholder. Yeah, yeah, so they were they were participating in your upside. Yeah. Well, now they're also participating. It, it, well, the question is, are they tra is that sense of value and ownership and how you treated them transferring into the offset of the pain? Is that helping the process of your transition? Absolutely. Uh, I am so proud of our people. And you know, again, the going from the world where you know, getting this amazing payout and opportunity and growth to people worrying a month later, is my job even safe? Mm -hmm. You just think about bringing it down to the personal level. Yeah. And, 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 you know, am I going to have this job to count on for my future, for my retirement, for, for my security? And you would think it would create a lot of anxiety. And of course it is it's anxious. But the people of Delta, I've asked them all to step up and to take the leverage into that, that you know, that, 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 that reservoir of, of, of great will yeah. that we have together and pull our airline forward and put the airline in a position where we can all build that future. And, and they have done that. Perfect example. Uh, we had throughout this last six months, we've had on average almost half our people, close to 40,000 people a month, volunteer to, to, to take the time off without pay. Wow. Almost 40, half, 40,000, 40, 40, over four, close to 50% of our people for this entire period. And so we've been through this last six months, and we have actually saved almost 50% of our labor bill. Wow. What, what, what's the guesstimate of that number? Oh, it's, it's in the billions. So wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> hold on. This is a really instructive point for leaders out here. Uh, you know, I keep saying you can be a capitalist, a successful capitalist, and not be a jerk. They invested a billion, then two billion in profit sharing, which, by the way, is not a giveaway program. That's profits that they earned in a, over their cost and return to investors and shareholders. Uh, but now you're seeing that return on investment that is equaling tens of billions of dollars from your employees who don't see themselves as an advers in this adversarial relationship no. with their employer, who says, "Look, we're here. We're here with you." Yeah, we're, and, and, we're and, and so we've been able to do. Everything on a voluntary basis. You know, our people, we don't have work in the airports at the level that we would typically. All the ground staff took a 25% reduction in hours, you know, voluntarily. Um, 
we've we've been able to get to the point now where we've not had to furlough any employees. You know, as a, as a result of that, we still have one group, our pilots, we're still working, they're unionized, right. and, and hopefully we get through that too. Right. But it's, it's just remarkable. The worst, down, the, the, the worst event in our history, yep. in our lifetime, yep. and an and, 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 and industry that's probably been one of the most impacted, if not the most, um, and we've been able to distinguish ourselves. And you know, the other airlines, unfortunately, are facing some very, very large layoffs here in the coming days. And at Delta, we're not as a result of that. So, uh, so to that point, John, that investment in them, yeah. you know, they, they, they not only have returned it, but their morale is stronger and they're more gracious and the gratitude and the thanks that they provide now is even better today than it was a year ago. To me, we can almost, I want to cover a couple of other quick items. We can almost stop the interview now because I think I really want the, those watching this from here and around the world and other CEOs who have been sort of watching the Delta example and the profit sharing model, which puts you in alignment between management and your employees versus the old, and this is me talking now, the old uh, union position of I'm, I, you're an adversary to me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, management and the line workers are in an adversarial relationship. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think unions have to reimagine their purpose mm -hmm. to see themselves as partners with, uh, mm -hmm. with the management. Uh, uh, because if your partner loses, you lose. That's right. Uh, but that's another conversation. But we've you've you invented and reimagined as KKR and some others have. Let's participate. Let's let our line employees and hourly wage even participate in the upside. Now, I think people have been watching that, going, you know, okay, but is that 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 works on the way up? Maybe uh, I'm getting less from of my profits, but does it work on the way down? This is this can be monet. This is hope monetized. Yeah, absolutely. This is goodwill mm -hmm. monetized. Yeah, yeah. On a balance sheet. On a balance sheet, and it's it's saving jobs and it's saving our future. We're an industry where our people have a lot of technical proficiency, a lot of technical training. If we were forced to go into layoffs, it takes a long time to get people schooled back and trained and put into the right position. Um, so we've been able, we're gonna be able to get through this pandemic with our people intact, with our people in position, ready when the recovery starts to really kick in and we're gonna be ready to go. Yeah, when that starts kicking in, you'll be kicking rear end. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, and you know, one other quick thing I want to yeah. say on the people side, it's not <coughs> just about the saving of the money. Yeah. It's also the performance they're doing for our customers. Uh, we, we, are, we are an analytical airline, you know that. You yeah, know, we data. send surveys, data, and, we're, yeah. we're, and, that, and, and customer, cust <laughs> customer feedback is what drives our focus on what we can do to get better and to continue continuous I like improvement. I'd like to have natural sugar on the plane, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Net promoter score is, is the tool we use, as, as many leading consumer-facing uh, companies and brands do. Uh, last year, our net promoter scores were in the 50s, which is a very good number, best number we ever had. We were, okay. we were high-fiving that. What's you the know, top? Uh, well, top's 100, so kind of okay. zero to 100, and okay. we're in the 50s. No airline at our, at our scale, big global airline, was anywhere close to us. Mm -hmm. This summer, we're at 75. 75. Really? From 50 to 75 in the face of a pandemic. <laughs> with, so, so we talk about your experience on yep. Delta. And we only, and it's net promoter, so we only count people that are just advocates of our brand. Right. And we're carrying, it's not, you know, while there's not as much travel going on anymore, we still carry about a million people a week today so it's you know still pretty big population we're we're we're, uh, we're surveying and that's what the people are doing they're serving customers yeah. they're saving the company money they're saving jobs and they're positioning us to have a hell of a recovery a hell of, yeah, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a of a relaunch yeah two questions two final questions um, we talked a little about this about this off camera e-commerce <clears throat> has seen had seen a 15% increase in the last eight to ten years uh, of folks go, buying online. They saw an increase from zero to 15 in eight to ten years. They've seen an increase from 15 to 25% in eight months, less than eight months. Uh, and all the and I don't think we're going to go back to the way the world used mm -hmm. to be. There'll be so balancing out, but people like 
the convenience. Uh, I have grown more, more in the last six months in everything I'm doing through crisis, through challenges, through the fire, it revealed, character revealed, than I have in the last certainly eight to ten years, and we are having a more impact now than we have ever had, rainbows after storms. Is that also, my guess is yes, but is it also been your experience? Has this been a learning moment for you, a doubling down moment, a reflection moment, mm -hmm. an innovation moment? Or is it just a, 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 a crash? Or is it just a, a fire and a third, four, third alarm fire every day? No, no, it's, it, it absolutely is. Uh, as I said, you know, I focused on the word protect, and the third protect is protecting our future. Okay. And we're taking our business which is a high volume, high intensity, 24-7 business. And you've Sorry, been, the first two was what? what protect? Protect our people, people, including our customers. And profit? Protect our, our, our cash. Yep, right. Raise enough cash right. to get through the winter. Right. And protect our future. Got it, okay. And the third protection of, of people, you, 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 you remember what travel was last year. You know, it oh, yeah. was planes were full, uh, airports I, I, were I full. I top 1,000 flights. 20, 24 7 operations around the world. It's tough to get in and fix the infrastructure. We know we have to improve the airports. We know we need to improve the technology, you know, the planes, all of that when you're running at full, full speed. Mm. We've taken the opportunity during this, this lower period of volume to say, okay, we're going we're gonna to accelerate mm -hmm. our path. to. The, we're going to take our future and we're going to pull it in. Mm. We're going to pull it forward. And so mm. air, airports, perfect example. We just opened up a brand new airport in Salt Lake City. A brand new hub, first new hub built in, the midst, in this country in the, in the, in the, in the, the middle, middle of, of a, okay. we opened it up two weeks ago and it's beautiful. <laughs> We're going to be opening up in LA, your old, your old hometown, yes, that's it. Uh, a brand new terminal two and three <clears throat> in the next two years. Okay, originally it was a five-year plan. We're going to get done in the next two years. You're going to save me 45 you, minutes from going around the terminal four and five. You're going to, you're going to have an amazing, amazing airport there, uh, LaGuardia. We're building the new LaGuardia Airport, pulling it in a couple of years, uh, doing the same thing here in pulling Atlanta in with some future. modernization, pulling in the future. Our aircraft, any airplane that we were going to retire in the next five years, it's already retired. Do it now. So the planes you're, you're coming in are the newest generation planes, best fuel efficiency, best cons customer comfort, uh, best opportunity. You have a better experience. Our fleet just got a whole lot younger yeah. because of the pandemic. Technology, we're modernizing our technology stack. We're going, we're going to be building to the cloud and, and creating much greater agility, which is hard when you're running at full out to take the risk around it. We've moved people around. All the time. Or, organization, we've got, we've got so many leaders we've taken and put in different positions because, you know, as we're building to the future, we want to see what these leaders have, yeah. the opportunities. We don't want the people that kind of built where we were. It was good, mm -hmm. but we want to be better. That's right. And we're giving, and, and this is the time to make all those changes That's while, right. while your risk profile actually is lower. The, de the Delta Pinterest board is full. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is the time, 2020 is a time to reimagine, plan, yeah. dream, yeah. execute. Uh, well, that, that's, good to, that's good to hear because that's confidence. Yeah. That's, that's belief it is, it in is the confidence. long game. That's that marathon yep. view versus the, uh, the, uh, the base hit view. My, my wife, uh, who's a big fan of yours, Shadra, uh, wanted to know what you're doing around wellness. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, what do you think about wellness in this environment? Yeah. Is that part of your mindset? Do you, yeah. uh, as you know, I'm about financial well-being and operational financial wellness. She's about health wellness. Mm -hmm. Is that part of, I mean, we're talking around it a little bit in the, in the culture and oh, the yeah. environment. Oh, but, so, so important, John. Um, you know, I, I said we started on the word protect and I'm moving now into the word resilience. Okay. Um, and and the, fo the focus going forward is about being resilient okay. and what we've learned. Things we took for granted, our health we took for granted. You know, we're never going to, we're never going to be the same after yeah. going through this experience and that's okay. You know, we've learned a lot about ourselves uh, and about testing and because we test all our people now. We, we, we track our people, we trace, we're, we're all over this stuff and into the science because we know testing is a big, big key right. to getting us through this. Uh, for myself personally, I've, I've become a Peloton junkie. I'm done running marathons so you won't have to contribute any more to my, my crazy <laughs> marathon journeys. Uh, but I'm a Peloton junkie and I, I'm on that machine machine three or four times a week, uh, all kinds of crazy times, hours of the day, evenings or, or, or mornings or whatever. Uh, it's, it's about connecting, you know, with loved ones, you know, family. Yes. I think everyone can relate to that. We've all had a lot more time yes. uh, to spend, spend it and, and hopefully we're all being very intentional 
about how we do it. So I just got my uh, oldest daughter married off a few weeks ago. Oh, and so congratulations. putting on, as I said to everyone at the, time, at the wedding, putting on a wedding and during a pandemic was a heck of an achievement. Oh, but we did it safely. We did so it, we did tested it. everybody. And it was actually, it was a, it was a beautiful, beautiful affair. Uh, and uh, my youngest, who's now 17, um, spending a lot of time with a 17-year-old. And you know, you're going, going through this kind of crazy world with a 17-year-old daughter and, and being as close to her as ever through this and seeing it through her eyes, you know, you, know, you learn a lot. Yeah. So this, is, this has been an amazing opportunity. I don't want to go through it again. Uh, you feel me, you feel me both. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, there's been a lot of learning. Um, I feel good about, you know, myself. I feel like you got to replenish. You know, we talked, yeah. use the marathon analogy. You know, yeah. we're still in the early miles here, and I know yeah. what it's like to run a marathon and take care of yourself through that preparation and getting through that race. And keeping your people with you. I mean, because, yes. you know, because, you know, everyone's reacted a little bit differently. Yeah. And you see some people, you know, kind of run to the fire yeah. and they're ready to go. And other people are walk, wandering around disillusion. What just happened? That's right. And you got to You got a level set and you got to kind of push through that and focus on where you're going, not where you've been. You know, in my, my new book that comes out uh, called Up From Nothing, I talk about the surviving mentality, a thriving mentality and a winning mentality. And a winner thought they were a winner before they won anything. And you're sort of the, the LeBron James of the airline industry. And, and, and LeBron knew he was going to win. He mm -hmm. just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan knew he was going to win. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, whoever they are, whoever your heroes or sheroes are, Steve Jobs, they knew they were going to win. They mm -hmm. just didn't know how or what. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that that's, that's something from the day I met you, you struck me as a winner. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing that's different now, uh, and, and it's almost brought me to tears in this interview, as I look in your eyes now, and I see a, a, a deeper soul. Mm -hmm. This has touched you. Yeah. And it's changed you. It has. It has. This has not been a lost moment on you. You, no. you are looking me, you're not looking me in the eyes, you're looking me in the soul. You're tr right. You are looking at every moment as precious. Yeah. yeah. What can I learn? What can I do? How I can I be better? I agree. And God gave us two ears and one mouth, so we listen twice as much as we talk. I want to thank you for being you. Thank you, John. Uh, and for being a friend to communities. I know you're giving back. Your philanthropy continues at Delta mm -hmm. in, slight, in spite of all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your community campaigns, your employees giving time to community continues. Mm -hmm. The 100,000 people who work for Delta, the 50,000 people who've cut it a break, are all contributing to this local and national economy. Mm -hmm. They're going to uh, my friend, uh, uh, the Buckhead Mercedes, black owners, it, mm -hmm. and buying some cars over there. They're going in the restaurants. They're, you're st because you've given them confidence to stay engaged in the economy. Right. And that those things don't get acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And I want to just thank you for how you lead and not just what you lead. Mm -hmm. And personally, I want to thank you for giving me confidence to wear tennis shoes with a suit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's now, the best thing we've learned, right? Now I look cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is the whole global forum. This has been a unique and special conversation with one of my favorite people uh, and a member of our whole global board of advisors, Ed Bash and CEO of Delta. Thanks, John. Thank you.